Most game characters can only jump one or two blocks. But with the main character of Minecraft, who is a man who can carry 800 million pounds, survive a month in the void, and all sorts of other nonsense, it is no surprise that he can also jump 59,000 blocks into the sky using 1,000 and crystals obtained from insane mob farms, in survival mode, with no mods. Now this raises several questions. Why this method instead of the other millions of methods of jumping? Why am I doing this? What is, jumping? In this challenge I will explain how and why I went 59,000 blocks high in a single jump, in Minecraft survival. It all began as a joke at 2 AM. What if I blew myself up with 1000 crystals in survival mode? It was a pretty funny idea, until it actually worked, and the guy I was talking to began to take it seriously. We started searching for methods to obtain the biggest jump in survival mode using end crystals. They may not seem realistic or effective, due to the fact that they instantly assassinate you and are also expensive, and also they got nerfed to oblivion in 1.16. But I discovered several things after doing a 3 AM experiment, that prove it all wrong. If you are in peaceful mode, end crystals cannot kill you at all, not even 1000 of them. But what gives end crystals the advantage over any other method of jumping, including TNT cannons? If you are familiar with the game mode known as High Pixel Bed Wars, then you may also be familiar with TNT jumping, where you jump before the TNT goes off for extra momentum. But after several hours of testing, I discovered end crystal jumping, but instead of jumping, it involves in the elytra and fireworks. Since end crystals can float in the air and have no hitboxes, you can use elytras and fireworks to fly through them with huge amounts of speed, then click the crystals to blow them up right after passing above them, to multiply your speed by outrageously preposterous amounts. This method goes two times higher than a normal end crystal jump. Sadly, this method is not possible with the TNT cannon since the way it's built does not allow you to fly through the explosion for extra speed. And one of the only versions that has overpowered end crystals, as well as firework boosting, is 1.11. Now that is fine and all. But how do we get that many end crystals? And how many end crystals do we even need? I decided to go with 1000 crystals since anything beyond that will crash my computer. So if we do the math, that means we need 1000 ender pearls, 500 blaze rods, 1000 gas tears, and 7000 glass. But how to obtain? Here is how. Due to the legendary farm creating tutorial guy known as Shulker Craft, there are methods to obtain such a large amount of materials in survival mode. And we need 3 farms. Number 1. Giant Enderman's Draw. Number 2. Giant Amazon Box of Lava. Number 3. Poisonous Flower Prank. And we were going to do this in my survival world that I had made for surviving one month in the void, since I already had basic resources on it. Now this is a 1.16 world, but I will show you how I converted it to 1.11, at the end of this challenge. Without further ado, it was time to game. There is just one problem that prevents us from gaming. After booting up the Void Challenge world, I found myself right where we left off in the last video. Stranded tens of thousands of blocks away from spawn with no tools or weapons, with random stacks of enchanted golden apples. And also my Elytra was about to pass away. For more context, watch the previous challenge. Anyways it was time to go on a rescue mission to save myself. Since the world's seed was reset to zero due to me messing around with switching versions, it was relatively easy to find the nearest end cities and exit portals. After getting a spare elytra, flying to the void base to get all my equipment, and going back to the overworld, it was time for the next order of business. I proceeded to return to the nether roof, walk to the gold farm to obtain experience to fix all the broken stuff in my inventory, and then flew 6000 blocks to reach the inescapable villager death trap to find some leftover emeralds. With these emeralds I bribed some villagers at my gaming basement to give me some name tags since the old zombies from the iron farm had died from peaceful mode. 
After getting some new zombies into the office and giving them names, I stood still for a few hours while waiting for the iron farm to make iron. After getting iron from the iron farm, we now had enough resources to make the enderman farm first. It was too much effort to get to the inescapable pillager death trap or inescapable gold trap just to get experience, so I gathered the materials to create the overpowered enderman farm in the end, since the end portal was very easy to get to. After getting the aforementioned materials, I flew to the end portal, for the purpose of entering the end end portal. After bridging about a hundred blocks from the mainland, it was time to commence the construction of Enderman Farm. Now you may be confused right now. How does this even work? Due to this farm being in the middle of nowhere, the Endermen have no choice but to spawn at the top of the funnel. But immediately after being born, they become enraged due to the existence of an Endermite at the center of the farm. And due to bad pathfinding, the Endermen will trip and fall down this tall straw, causing them to lose most of their health making them very easy to assassinate and i am at the bottom of this straw drinking all the ender pearls and experience even though the tutorial said specifically to use the sweeping edge enchant to farm i was going to disobey the law and farm with this average sword called the subscribe to i go by lots of name sword we are currently aiming for a sub golev e to the power of negative imaginary number times a micro rate parameter delta p1 to p plus delta p2 to the p inspiration absolute value of square root please one smash the subscribe button thank you Anyways back to jumping 59,000 blocks high. This farm is too overpowered. After getting 1,000 pearls in just a few minutes, and stuffing them into my suitcases, the next thing I am going to do is make an obsidian farm. Now you might be saying, this was not part of the plan. But now it is. Because after looking at the materials needed to build the ghast farm, I made the sudden realization that I need 700 obsidian. But do not let that number scare you. After getting on breaking 3, mending and efficiency 5 on my diamond pickaxe for maximum obsidian excavation, I followed this free infinite obsidian tutorial where items are constantly thrown into the end portal to constantly respawn the spawn platform, which can be abused for infinite obsidian. So then I used a paperweight to hold down left click to farm obsidian constantly, and then went to take a nap and then came back from the nap, and I returned to find stacks of the delicious obsidian. With this newfound obsidian, it was now time for the penultimate step of jumping 66,000 blocks into the air. The Ghast Farm and the Amazon Box Blaze Rod Farm, both of which I will make at the same time. First I would need to gather the materials. 600 obsidian. Truckloads of glass. Numerous hoppers. Chests. Vines. And lava. Now it was time for the penultimate step of the penultimate step. Building the farm. The ghast farm comes in two parts. The first one is built on top of the nether ceiling, and is used to capture ghasts. And I will proceed to build it, now. The second part which basically puts the ghasts in a giant box of poison flowers, is built on a giant floating box in the overworld. There is one issue with this however. The farm requires 50 wither flowers to automatically kill the ghasts. And that amount requires a wither flower farm. And this requires a wither. Which requires wither skeleton heads. Which requires wither skeletons. Which requires so it was time for plan B. After scrolling through the comment section of the tutorial, I stumbled upon a reply saying to not put any ghast killing system. And that gave me an idea. What if I did not put any ghast killing system? Which means, no wither roses were needed, but also meaning I have to manually kill, according to my calculations and mathematical binomial analysis, 750 ghasts. 
Not to mention that ghasts are one of the most annoying entities to fight, with each one armed with infinite nuclear missiles. But anything to avoid building the Wither Rose farm. So it was time to close the tutorial and make my own gas killing chamber. After doing a test, I discovered that I did not even need to kill the ghasts. Due to reasons unknown to mankind, some of the ghasts in the chamber just mysteriously die on their own. So even though the farm made garbage amounts of tears, it was good for me since I could just do nothing for free stuff. The real issue was escaping the ghast farm. Upon going back to the overworld, I found myself getting blasted everywhere like a volleyball. The solution to this was to sit near the entrance and spam click to redirect all the ballistic missiles back into the farm. After collecting the 1000 white candy cords, it was time for the final part of the penultimate step of the penultimate step, which was to build the Amazon Box Blaze farm. Now this was the simplest farm so far, but do not let appearances deceive you. Dealing with the blazes while building the farm was extraordinarily exasperating with up to 50 blazes blazing me at once. I had to eat golden apples to not pass away. After finishing the farm, clearing up this entire mess and finally settling down to do some blaze grinding, the 1000 blaze powders needed was obtained quite easily. Combine this and the ghast tears with the ender pearls from earlier, and we have enough materials to make 1000 end crystals. Just kidding. Don't forget the 7000 glasses needed for the crystals. I basically had to excavate an entire desert for this, and use this monstrosity of a smelting area to procure the glasses. After doing 4 rounds of filling furnaces with sand and lava, which took about an hour, I did it. With 4 shulkers full of glass, it was time to craft all the crystals. Now that we finally have 1000 end crystals. It was time for the next challenging part. Setting up the launching area. But not so fast. It is now time to downgrade the world somehow without corrupting it. As I said earlier, to do this, I would need to use the super annoying method I found during the previous challenge. It's where I take the end crystals, building materials, and elytra stuff, go several hundred blocks away from base, switch to 1.15 and load the world and then switch to 1.11 to do the end crystal jump. This has to be done far away from base since downgrading resets everything within 100 blocks around the player. Now that was dealt with, end crystals were now unnerfed in this version, so it was time to build a 50 block tall launching area, and put all the crystals on top. We need 1000 end crystals in one block, so we will use pistons to shove all the crystals into each other to create this crystal monstrosity which would take about half an hour. So after watching the best and worst show I've never seen while spamming end crystals, the next step is to go inside the launch tunnel, where the elytra, go on peaceful mode, do the jump, and let the fireworks begin figuratively and literally. So I did that. altitude this high, I can basically glide tens or even hundreds of thousands of blocks away from here with an elytra. I had basically done a rocket launch. But we aren't going to use this to travel anywhere. I was going to do the 59 km water bucket MLG. Basically doing a clutch from low orbit. So, can I pull it off? Due to this catastrophe, I had lost everything. 1600 levels disappeared. And the zombie workers at the iron farm had died from peaceful mode again. Anyways, I am done here. 
we had accomplished what we wanted. For more stupid challenges like this, remember to subscribe. And as always, thank you to the channel sponsors.